Hi there, we're excited that you're joining us here today to learn about scholarships. I'm Kim Plasek and I'm part of the Central Office Financial Aid Team. And my name is Alex Delonis uh, and I'm the Financial Aid Director uh, for the Central Indiana Region. Um, like Kim said, we're excited to have everyone here today. Um, and we're here to talk about all things related to scholarships, specifically how to apply for Ivy Tech scholarships, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about outside scholarships as well. Um, anything we can do to help you uh, finance your education. Um, so in an event like this, there is one thing I want to point out, um, that it is a live event, um, and we don't want to talk about anyone's specific account information. Um, so if you do have questions about your student account, feel free to call the Ivy Line at uh, 188 uh, Ivy Line. Uh, there you can get specific details uh, about your scenario, okay? First though, we uh, wanted to uh, ask if you uh, uh, know what kinds of scholarships Ivy Tech uh, offers to students each year. Uh, through our, uh, through our donors and through grants, uh, we roughly have about $6 million uh, to offer our students in scholarships. That's about one scholarship for about every four or five students who have submitted an application, Alex. Isn't that great? That, that's impressive. Um, Kim, with all that money available, how do students even apply? Well, it's pretty easy, Alex. It just takes about 15 to 20 minutes to submit uh, an application. All they have to do is, uh, with, through their uh, My Ivy account, just uh, log in and go to My Ivy and click the financial aid and uh, uh, billing uh, tab and then click uh, the apply for scholarships button. And then just follow the prompts. It just takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And I would suggest a, a, top, ten, a top tip and that's be detail oriented and pay attention to the information that you submit. Uh, uh, there's an opportunity to supply your contact information and also to uh, submit essays. And if you bring that information to the session when you submit your application with you, it'll go really smoothly and very quickly. But if you decide that you don't want to submit an essay or a letter of reference, you don't even have to do that. Interesting. Okay. Um, that's a lot of great information you just gave, Kim. And um, if anyone out there has any questions, go ahead and type them in um, in the comments section of the, of the feed, and we'll be happy to answer them one by one right here live uh, for you so you can get that information. Um, when talking about those scholarships, Kim, um, what about what about the requirements? Um, what if I had a low GPA in high school, um, or uh, what if my what if I think my parents make too much? Um, how uh, what are the requirements like? You know, are they for all students or or just for the students with high GPAs and low incomes? Oh, that's a great question, Alex. All of our scholarships uh, are for all kinds of students and all kinds of needs. They're really established by our uh, donors and various criteria. So don't think that you don't meet the criteria. Please submit an application as early as possible in the school year whenever you can. Awesome, awesome. Oh, looks like we got our first question, Kim. Oh, that's great. Um, Kim, are there any scholarships in the Richmond area? We have scholarships throughout the entire state. Uh, we, ha we offer um, uh, thousands of scholarships. So please go ahead and submit them. We still have scholarships through the uh, summer term and also into the 17-18 the academic year. We have two applications available right now. Uh, just log into your My Ivy account, and if you're enrolling for summer, you will see uh, the 16-17 application. And if you're enrolling for the 17-18 academic year, that's for the upcoming fall term or spring or next summer, then you would submit the 17-18 academic year. And sometimes that's a little confusing for students at this time of year when they see two applications. Awesome. That's great information. So as you can see, Kim is our scholarship guru. Um, and that helps when we're leading into our next question from another uh, Facebooker. Um, Kim, can you offer any tips about applying for scholarships? Well, I, I would say... Uh, one of the most important things is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would encourage you to uh, bring uh, 
uh, your information with you when you sit down to complete your application. And, and by that, I mean think through who would provide a good reference for you. Uh, many of the scholarships um, request a letter of reference uh, for you. So think, uh, think about a faculty member or an employer that you've had who would speak highly of you and you'll need uh, contact information for them. The more questions that you answer on the application, the, the higher likelihood that you will uh, potentially match the criteria for more scholarships. Uh, that's the purpose of submitting the application and answering as many questions as possible. You want to match uh, the criteria for as many scholarships as possible. So answer as many questions. That's awesome. Um, and I know that Ivy Tech offers a lot of scholarships. I know there's uh, scholarships available outside of Ivy Tech as well. Um, so it's going to take a lot of hard work on your part, honestly. Um, like Kim said, uh, you don't necessarily have to even complete our scholarship application to be eligible for our scholarships. It would help your chances, but we'll match students up to different scholarships uh, depending on uh, your student information, how you're progressing here at the college. Um, if you want to take advantage of some of those outside scholarship resources, um, that's going to be a lot of work on your part. Um, you can't necessarily, uh, it's not as convenient like when you fill out our Ivy Tech scholarship application and apply for multiple funds, that's not the way it's going to work for those outside scholarship funds. Um, so one important thing as you are doing your scholarship search is just try to avoid those scholarship scams. Um, if anyone ever tries to charge you um, to do a scholarship application, uh, that's not the application for you. It's likely not going to work out for you in the end. How much does it cost to fill out the Ivy Tech scholarship application? Really good question, Alex. <laughs> it, your scholarship application at Ivy Tech is free. It yes. costs nothing. Yes, absolutely. Um, wow, we got a ton of good questions coming in. Um, so uh, can you get a scholarship uh, if you get a loan for summer classes? Um, yes, technically, yes. Um, for some students, uh, the way it works in combination with financial aid um, is you can receive scholarships and other grants or loans um, through completing your FAFSA, your free application for federal student aid. Um, so if you do obtain a student loan, um, the important thing to note that is we can't pay you more than it costs to attend Ivy Tech. And as you know, uh, Ivy Tech is a low cost option. Um, so your tuition isn't going to be um, extremely high. So um, if you have a loan, it may be enough to cover all of your tuition and fees and um, your expenses in your books anyway. Um, but we can combine the scholarship with that loan uh, to help maybe reduce your loan debt uh, or give you uh, different options for different things. Great question. I want to touch on, uh, you asked about uh, uh, scholarships uh, that are available uh, outside of Ivy Tech. Yeah. Uh, I want to, we have a little link on our website and I want to reference that here. Um, you can go to uh, www.ivytech.edu slash financial aid slash scholarships and it has a little bit of information about some, a few external scholarships that you can uh, find right now and also if you do submit your Ivy Tech online application. There's a, a search feature where you can learn more about the scholarships that are offered here at Ivy Tech, as well as a few external scholarships uh, where Ivy Tech has been asked to publish, publish some information about them as well. So to do that, uh, when you create your online uh, application, then at the top of the page on uh, the application, there's a search feature. It's real easy, and if you need help with that, you can just ask anyone to express enrollment center the answer center. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, leading into our next question, Kim, um, I know I probably wasn't as good of a student as I could have been uh, coming out of high school. Um, how does a student qualify for merit-based scholarships? Um, do they have to, we talked about the different GPAs, um, is there anything, do they need to be taking specific courses? All of our uh, scholarship parameters are established by our donors and uh, we have the ability to uh, match scholarships based on um, uh, all of your enrollment information. So all of those are uh, set up uh, through a, a match. 
matching system. Awesome. Um, and what if a student um, applies for a 1617 scholarship um, and they want to apply for 1718? Um, can they do, do they only need to do one application? Can they use the same references? Do the references just carry over from one year uh, to the other? That's a really good question. We get that question a lot from our students. Uh, you only have to submit an application one time, but you do have to submit one application per year. So let me explain that a little bit. You don't have to submit an application for each scholarship. You don't have to submit an, an application for each term but you do have to submit an application each academic year. So I kind of touched on this a little bit when we first started, but it is kind of confusing because right now when you go online to submit an application, we're at that transitional period between academic years where you can enroll in summer courses for the 16-17 academic year, and you can also enroll for fall courses for the 17-18 academic, 17, academic year. That's good to know. Yes. So please enroll for fall, please enroll for summer. Mm -hmm. But if you're completing the application uh, for scholarships, you can complete both academic year applications. And you'll see that when you uh, log in to do that. that that's great information. Um, I know we've talked a lot about scholarships for traditional age students or students coming out of high school, um, but what about scholarships for adults? Um, what if a student maybe attended here a long time ago, um, a adult student coming back, um, or what if they don't even live in Indiana? Uh, what's the options for that? Oh, that's a really good question. Ivy Tech has a broad range of students, and our scholarships meet uh, a, broad, a broad range of our student needs as well. Um, please apply for the scholarships, no matter what you think you might qualify for. Um, our donors set the parameters, and we have a wide range of scholarships to meet a wide range of needs. Yeah, there's a, a saying I always like is, you, you will not get 100% of the scholarships you don't apply for. Um, so uh, you're already setting yourself up for failure if you're not doing the application, no That's matter right. what. It only takes 15 to 20 minutes. Please apply. Mm -hmm. um, so what if I need help? What if I tried it? Um, I, I don't understand the application. Can I visit my Express Enrollment Center, my financial aid office? Who could, who at Ivy Tech could help me with my application? That's a great question. So there are two ways that you can get some assistance. We provided that um, that phone number to the 188 Ivy line um, previously. You can call them at any time. There's also an uh, opportunity through our website. Um, at, or email chat if you would like assistance there. You can visit an Express Enrollment Center uh, if you would like some live hands-on experience uh, with someone. Also, when you're uh, completing your online application, if you have a question that you need um, assistance with, there is a contact us opportunity where you can submit information, and those actually come to me, folks, and I'll respond to them. Yeah, and uh, Kim's fantastic with that. I'm sure you'll get a quick response. Thanks, um, Alex. So, um, some of our students come to us, uh, you know, from, from all around the globe. Um, we specifically have a student uh, who lives in Morocco um, who uh, is thinking about uh, moving to America and attending Ivy Tech. Um, so, how would you advise this student? Um, to go about uh, the transition, does, does the process change for the student? The process for all of our students is the same. Yep. You have to enroll at Ivy Tech, and once you enroll, then you get a student ID number. You need that student ID number to then log into My Ivy, and when you log into My Ivy, that's when you can click the financial aid and um, billing uh, tab, and then click the Apply for Scholarships button and go ahead and start the application online. Awesome. Um, what about for senior citizens? Um, do you know, um, let's not stop at senior citizens, what about any age requirements? Um, are there any specific age parameters that you know of or specifically for senior citizens that might qualify? Our scholarships are for all of our students, no matter what your age is, no matter what any of your backgrounds are. They vary per region. Uh, for, it all depends on what the donor has established as the criteria. 
and our financial aid offices are responsible uh, to meet the uh, requirements that are established by our donor. Mm -hmm. uh, so please, don't let whatever uh, idea you think uh, might limit your ability to qualify for a scholarship, don't let that hinder you. Please do submit that application. You yeah. might be surprised what scholarships are out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it start, another step in the process is also applying to the college. Um, we see um, you can apply from anywhere, whether you're in Morocco or you're in Las Vegas or wherever you're at. Um, the application's right online. Um, it's it's an easy to do, um, probably quicker to do that than the scholarship application, but the scholarship application, Kim said, would only take you about 20 minutes or so. Um, so you can take about an hour and knock out um, a lot of the requirements that you need to help you be a successful student here um, at Ivy Tech. And why, why stop there? Why not knock out your FAFSA at the same time? I was just gonna mention that, Alex. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so important. Um, and it's, uh, you know, why miss out on all of these funds uh, that you could be entitled to? Um, so do your FAFSA, get your admissions application done, get your Ivy Tech scholarship application done, um, and then you can start grinding it out and searching for all of those scholarships um, that you may be able to use, bring into Ivy Tech and help pay for your education. And Alex, should anyone ever pay anyone to, to submit a FAFSA for them? No. Uh, so uh, FAFSA, the first word in FAFSA is actually free. Um, so it's the free application for federal student aid. Um, so much like a scholarship application, you should never uh, pay someone um, to complete your FAFSA application. We would be more than happy to help you complete that here at Ivy Tech, just like we would be happy to help you complete your scholarship application. All right. This, we have a lot of good questions coming in here. I'm Kim. so glad to hear from our students today. <laughs> it's really nice to see all this feedback. Okay. So what about, so we have a lot of special populations um, here at the college. Um, what about resources or scholarships for international students? Uh, again, um, our scholarship parameters are established by our donors, and they vary by region. So um, if you have specific needs and you uh, want to find out what is available in your individual region, I would encourage you to uh, contact your individual financial aid office or contact this answer center. But in general, um, uh, we have scholarships that are available for all of our students, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would encourage you to apply. Um, I know one of the most, you know, uh, what could be perceived as one of the most daunting tasks of completing a scholarship application would be the essay. Um, so do I need to complete an essay for every single scholarship? Um, is there anything specific that I should include in the essay? Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a really good question. So um, we do have an optional general essay on the application. It's optional, you don't have to complete it. Some students don't. Um, again, um, the more questions you complete when filling out your application, the you increase your potential to qualify for more, for more scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that general scholarship uh, essay requests you to answer are things like, what are your career plans? Why did you choose Ivy Tech? Mm -hmm. um, uh, things like that. Um, it's up to you how you answer that question. And right. it includes you know seven or eight little bullet point um, ticklers to kind of generate uh, an answer from you, but it's up to you how you answer that question and whether or not you choose to answer it. Again, it's not a requirement for you to submit the application. Your application will be accepted even if you don't answer that. And then the application is designed for you to select um, a primary campus that you plan to attend, and then if you think you might attend some other uh, campuses during your enrollment that year. Sometimes, you know, a student might attend uh, Indianapolis as their primary campus and then take an occasional course down in Bloomington. That happens mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, especially with some of our transfer students. Um, then what will happen is the application will show you what questions 
uh, are relevant for our central Indiana region as well as our Bloomington region. So you don't see all the other questions that are relevant for all the other campuses. So it shortens right. it for you. And then you might see a few other essays that are pertinent to just those regions. Again, you only have to answer those things, those questions or those essays that are um, specific to um, what your background is. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's, for example, um, and I don't want to get too mired in the muck here, but sure. like in, in one um, region, there's a question about a specific major. Well, if you're not in that major, then you wouldn't want to answer that question. Right, right, yeah. And I like to put it in perspective. Um, I mean, how long would it take you to, to write an essay? Um, maybe a couple hours, two, three hours. And then what if you get $1,000 for that? You're kind of making 500 bucks an hour or so, right? I mean, that that's a big payoff. I wish I made 500 bucks an hour. That's great. So, <laughs> that's a few bucks. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Um, Kim, you know, students go into the portal and they notice that there's a timer in there. Oh, um, a can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. What Alex is talking about and what the student who um, wrote in with that great question is at the top of the screen, when you are creating your application, there's about a 40 or 45 minute timer. You, what that is uh, counting down is how long that window will stay open when you're submitting information uh, for your application. Uh, to keep that timer, uh, to increase the time on your screen, mm -hmm. you just have to click save and it'll increase the time again. So, um, so they, they just have to click save and it'll just extend it? They click save and it'll extend that time. Oh, okay. Sure. So, but what you also can do is if you find that it's taking you a little bit longer and maybe that session, your class is going to start and you need to come back later. Right, right, You can right. hit um, save and close it down and then revisit that session later. So when you're doing your application, you don't have to finish it in one session either. Wow. okay. So you can start it and then come back the next day if you want. See, I've never done the application myself, so I, I didn't know that. That, that is interesting. Um, and I think really, you know, your, your information is sensitive, and sometimes you might be doing this at a public computer um, or something like that. So uh, we want your information to be safe, uh, first and foremost. So if you want to um, look, at your look at the application and the questions and prepare an essay in Word and then come back to the application and then just cut and paste it, you can whip right through that application really quickly, 15 huh. to 20 minutes. That's awesome. Um, so I know, Kim, you talked about a lot of great things and you talked about only having to do one application, um, but will applying multiple times increase a student's chances of getting more awards? Well, that's a good question, but you can't apply multiple times. Uh, you can only question. submit your application one time per academic year. Okay, but, but dur while, during that process, um, we will actually match them to those different funds, so they don't necessarily have to. That's that's a good question. So how the system works is it's all electronic, and when you answer those questions, it creates a data field for us. And by us, I mean there are scholarship committees that then use the data fields to then populate students that match the criteria for these scholarships and review all of the applications. So we have a student who um, has applied for financial aid, mm -hmm. um, and they have used up uh, the amount of financial aid they were eligible for over the fall and spring terms, um, and they're looking for summer scholarship options. Mm -hmm. um, now, I know that I would encourage uh, this student to reach out uh, to the Answer Center, to the Ivy Line, or to your local financial aid office to get a little bit more detailed information about your account. Um, but generally, would, would it be possible at this point, would it be possible for this student to maybe get their tuition covered for summer? That's a good question. Um, many regions are still awarding summer scholarships. Now, the bulk of funds uh, for uh, the academic years the academic year have been spent because most of the academic year has already uh, mm -hmm. ended but we do have the summer term left 
So there are some funds available in, and the amount per region varies uh, because it depends on how many scholarships there are. So if you haven't submitted a, a, a 16, 17 application, there is no deadline. You can still submit an there's application. No there's no deadline? There's no deadline because you can still enroll throughout the academic year. At Ivy Tech, you can submit an application throughout the entire year. That's impressive. Um, so when students apply for anything, or in, in life you apply for anything, you kind of want to know when you're going to hear something back, right? If you apply for a job, if you apply for a scholarship. So if they apply for one of our scholarships, when should they anticipate hearing something? Well, that also varies per scholarship. Okay. because it depends on the parameters for the awarding of that scholarship and when the committee can meet. But generally you'll hear something um, from the financial aid offices through your uh, MyIV account. And if you want to check whether or not you um, uh, have received a scholarship through the application portal, mm -hmm. um, uh, again through that uh, apply uh, for scholarships button, at the top of the screen, there's um, a little home icon. You can click on that, and it will show you uh, my rewards or my oh. awards. Excuse so they can me. see all their all their awards right there. You can see them right there. Huh. Okay, that's convenient. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a student here um, asking a question about um, transferring credit um, and if the courses they take here at Ivy Tech are transferable um, to other schools, specifically uh, Purdue. Um, and I know I started at a community college myself um, and transferred credit um, to a four-year school. Um, and what I would encourage you to do um, is reach out to your home campus, um, visit your uh, academic advisor, your registrar's office, um, to get a little bit more information about the courses you've taken. Um, and maybe they can sit you down um, with a curriculum guide and figure out what program you're transferring to at that other institution. Um, and what I would also encourage you to do, specifically for Purdue, I know that they have scholarships available. Um, so wherever you're transferring, um, go to that school, call those offices, visit their websites, and see what kind of opportunities they have. And they might even have opportunities just for transfer students. Um, so that could be a, a pot of money that o is only eligible to you um, and other students like you in your situation. Um, so, um, we have a question here um, about um, using some of the resources on campus. Um, and uh, so say, I know we have a staff, um, here in Indianapolis, we have a staff sign language interpreter. Um, he's awesome, I work with him all the time. Um, and if a student needed assistance, um, say with a certain accommodation or getting assistance, um, what do you think the best way, um, where would we point that student to? Um, you, it's a question about uh, needing assistance and uh, completing the application? Yeah, with the scholarship application. Uh, most of our um, regions uh, have disability services. Mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage the student to contact their disability services office and if they need assistance doing that, our express enrollment offices can help with that. Mm -hmm. If uh, they want to obtain assistance with that uh, beforehand um, and they feel it would be easy for them or helpful, they can also call that answer center or email mm -hmm. um, ivytech.edu. And there's also that um, uh, email, the online chat function. If the, if the phone doesn't work, mm -hmm. they can do the um, ivytech.edu seconds the online chat feature pops up okay and and someone will come available right away to help them that's awesome yeah the, the resources are available so we will be glad to help you out um, we'll be glad to um, you know make sure that you get the same opportunities that every other student gets and the, the resources are here you just I know we just have to point you in the right direction to get you there um, so contact your home campus uh, and they'd be happy to connect you with someone uh, to help you finish the application. Um, so, Kim, when I'm completing my scholarship application, um, who am I directing it to? Am I writing it to you? Am I writing it to the president? 
of the college, who am I directing that scholarship application oh, to? That's, that's a good question. Uh, the uh, voice, um, uh, the audience would be your scholarship committee, the scholarship committee that reviews the application. Okay, awesome. Um, and I know you talked about this next one a little bit earlier and about those deadlines, right? So we, um, we have a lot of time left for uh, 2017, 2018. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about the deadline? Sure. Um, we have no deadline, but you really should apply as early as possible. Don't wait. Right, that's a good, I'm glad you followed up with that, Alex. Mm -hmm. um, the earlier you apply, you increase your potential to be considered for more scholarships. If you know you're going to attend classes in the fall, please consider completing that application uh, for scholarships as early as possible. Our committees meet uh, to review candidates and you want to potentially qualify for those scholarships as early as possible to reduce your, uh, financial, your financial obligation there. If we can help you out, uh, we certainly want to be able to do that. We understand the cost of education and so do our donors. We want to help you to make the burden of an education less. We want to help you to achieve. That's fantastic. Um, it sounds like, you know, Ivy Tech and you, you've thought about a, a lot um, when it goes into building the scholarship application and everything that's available to the students. Um, what if the student um, submitted the application and then maybe wanted to change something later? Do they have the ability to do that? Um, unfortunately, no. Once your answers are submitted, it's a final application. So when you're completing the application, you do have the opportunity to review it before you hit that submit button. So please do so. Take the time to make sure your answers are complete. So when uh, scholarships have criteria like GPA or number of hours enrolled, things like that, we have the ability at Ivy Tech to update that information based on your enrollment data. Oh, okay. So you don't have to be worried about what answers like that are on your essay, are on your application, mm -hmm. but because we know that changes. We have the ability to match that automatically through um, what's called our banner system. Oh, okay, that's awesome. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, can a student, we have a student asking our advice. Okay. Um, can they use the same three recommend, uh, recommendations for both scholarship applications? Is that a good idea? Uh, for um, both academic year Yeah, applications? For, the, for the two active academic years. Sure, you can. There's no problem with that. Um, and uh, there are um, also, there's an opportunity to submit letters of recommendation for statewide scholarships as well as regional scholarships. Mm. You can submit them for the same ones if you want awesome. as well. Awesome. Uh, less work for the student, right? That's right. Um, so not every student um, is going to take a full course load every semester. We know that. Um, and we actually know that the majority of our students are actually part-time students. Um, what kind of scholarship opportunities are available for students who are only enrolled part-time? It varies uh, per region and per uh, donor. Our donors set the criteria because it depends on what they are uh, gifting to the college. So if you want to find out what information or what uh, specific scholarships like that are available in your area, what I would encourage you to do is once you have enrolled and you have your C number and you started your application, you can search available scholarships by keywords. Uh, just go to uh, the scholarship application and log in and then at the top of the screen you can click the search for scholarships option and then uh, in the keyword function you could enter part time if you would like. Okay, that's very helpful. Or you could enter in your regional campus or your major or um, whatever option you wanted, and it'll bring up multiple uh, mul multiple scholarships there. Okay. Um, I know, uh, again, a lot of students uh, get anxiety about 
writing papers and maybe that's what they view uh, completing a scholarship essay like. Um, so we're getting a lot of questions related to the essay. Sure, I um, um, just any any additional advice you can give to help um, you know ease ease anxiety there. Sure. Um, do you absolutely have to do it? Um, if you do, maybe those things you mentioned earlier about um, what should be included. Okay, I understand um, writing an essay, but that's a nerve-wracking experience. If, if you don't feel like you're a writer and you've never written something like that before, uh, that can be a very um, uh, daunting experience. So mm -hmm. what you might want to do is log in, look at the application, and just take a moment to read what that essay is first. And, and maybe just uh, copy that into like a Word document for a moment close down the application and revisit that later. Mm -hmm. Let that essay marinate a little bit. Sure. You know, think about it. See what questions are important to you. See how you would answer that. And then once you think about it, then jot down some, some brief little answers to that and then turn them into statements. You know, mm -hmm. if you want your answer to be grammatically correct, mm -hmm. And um, if you want, you, if writing is a hard thing for you, maybe uh, you want to uh, uh, visit uh, your advisor here. I'm sure your advisor would be willing to help you. Uh, maybe a friend or someone would be able to edit it for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that's actually great advice. I know um, I never submitted a paper in college without someone else looking at it first. I would treat my uh, scholarship essay the same exact way, um, especially since it could get you paid um, so that's definitely great advice. Um, I also um, would recommend um, maybe uh, you know thinking about who is going to look at it. Sometimes your professor might look at it. Sometimes there's a writing center on campus um, that could even break it down and, and look into it a little bit uh, for you. Um, but uh, definitely uh, walking away from it after typing it um, is, is a really good, uh, really good recommendation. Good call. So students are starting, a lot of students, are, the majority of our summer classes start on June 5th. Um, there's still time for them, right? Yes. Okay, there's still time. That's awesome. Um, all they need to do, uh, you, you may get a message from us, you're already being considered for scholarships, again, even if you do not complete the scholarship application. Um, so there is still time for you to get funds um, before classes start. Um, so just monitor your IB, um, your My IB account, um, but then again, submit that scholarship application so you can get those extra uh, questions answered so we can possibly match you to more funds. Um, so. We've said over and over again over the last 40 minutes about uh, there being no deadline. Mm -hmm. um, so why does there say there's a, a due date of June 30th out there? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, because it's software. Mm -hmm. And that's a field that appears that we can't erase in, sure. in the software. So uh, June 30th is when the academic year goes away for uh, submitting an application for 1617. Mm -hmm. So you will no longer be able to submit any scholarship application for 1617 oh, okay. at all on June okay. 30th. So at that time, at that June 30th uh, date is when it's all going to switch over to only being able to apply for fall, fall right. spring scholarships of That's the next right. year. That makes sense. Um, uh, let's see, so I have a student here um, who says they're looking at the scholarship tab. Mm -hmm. um, it's only showing uh, two, one for 2016 and one two th for 2017. Um, we said that there were multiple regarding different degrees. Um, is that within the general application? They're, they're only seeing two applications, or they're only yeah, seeing I think two there's, scholarships? They're searching scholarships? Or are yeah, they? I think they're seeing two <coughs> applications. Um, but they're wondering where all the scholarships okay, are. Okay, that's a great question. So it, uh, it sounds like you're on the application page, and you would only see two, one for the 16-17 academic year and one for the 17-18 academic year, because we're only accepting applications for those two years. 
If you want to search what scholarships are available from that page, <coughs> excuse me, go to the very top of the screen and there's a um, <coughs> tab that says search, search scholarships. Mm -hmm. Click on that and then it will bring up the option for you to enter uh, a category, which is the region and then keywords. Oh, okay. Um, so, what if uh, I have a, a 3.7 GPA, uh, but the scholarship requirement says 3.8? Should I even bother? A 3.7 and it says 3.8? Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, uh, that, that 3.8 scholarship might not be the only scholarship we offer. Right. So I would encourage you to apply for scholarships because you don't know what other ones there are available. It right. only takes one. So. Because we have scholarships that require all different types of GPAs, That's right? That's right. Um, so you may not uh, meet the qualifications for that scholarship, um, but I'm sure with that high GPA um, that you'll qualify for other scholarships as well. That's right. So one of the things I would like to touch on just briefly, Alex, sure. is that our scholarships cover a wide variety of uh, expenses. Many of them cover tuition and fees. Some of them cover certain fees. Mm -hmm. Some of them also cover books. Some cover tuition, fees, and books. So depending on what you need, a scholarship might cover those expenses. So I could, could I find a scholarship that covers my entire tuition and fee bill? Um, you might be able to find it in the search. Uh -huh. uh, we might match you to it. Okay. So it depends on- But it's on possible. Right. Oh, we okay. may be able to match you to it. There, there are also a few that aren't searchable there. So, um, but just submit that application. Okay. Cool. Well, we've had a lot of fun uh, talking to you guys today. Um, if there are any other questions, um, uh, maybe that uh, linger in right after we're finished. Um, we'll keep an eye on uh, the feed uh, to make sure that we follow up with you. Um, we would also encourage you to um, continue uh, the conversation at blog.ivytech.edu. Um, we will address any other questions that come in um, at that location. Um, so, Kim, I don't know about you. I know I had a lot of fun. Um, this was a blast. Um, I hope we can do it again sometime. Um, it's, it's nice when you get an expert like Kim here um, to uh, be able to field all of these questions because she's not, uh, she can't be everywhere, right? So it's, it's nice to be able to grab someone like Kim and, and be able to pick her brain for a little bit. So um, we appreciate your time. Alex and is great. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yeah, and thank you very much. I look forward to seeing those applications come in. Yeah. Bye.